And I'm about to walk into the bathroom and I hear somebody down the long corridor shout, Bianca, Pastor Bianca. Well, I wave and I'm about to go into the bathroom and she says my name again, Bianca. The security guard in the back walked over and he's just like, are you okay? Do you need help? I said, no, that's fine. He's like, do you know that lady? I was like, no, I don't think so. And all of a sudden I hear, it's just me and Jesus. It's just me and Jesus. Get out. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Life can feel like a roller coaster, but in the beauty and the chaos, if you look for it, life is full of love, joy, and kindness. Welcome to the Candace Cameron Bure podcast. We're here to share conversations about life's challenges, celebrations, and everything in between. Season four is When the Going Gets Tough with Bianca Juarez Oltoff. Come join us. A young mother labeled impure, a shepherd boy considered unclean. Experience Jesus' birth through their eyes this season with Christmas with the Chosen, Holy Night. The specially remastered story is only in theaters from December 12th to 17th, including a never before seen performance from Andrea and Matteo Bocelli, seven musical performances, and two new monologues. Christmas with the Chosen, Holy Night, is the perfect way to celebrate the hope and joy of Christmas. Learn more at fathomevents.com. It's our last episode of this last season. Last episode. We did it. We, we did, did it. it. We've had an amazing, we've had amazing conversations. We have. I think we've had levity. We've gone deep. We've been honest. We've answered listener questions. And our heart in this, as we were preparing for the season, was that people would just get enough courage to take one more step and not quit. Yes. And here we are. Resilient. And I think you have given us these incredible tools and your words of encouragement, your scripture, your prayers has been such a blessing to all of our listeners and to me personally. So thank you, thank you for being my, my guest co-host this season. You've been amazing. Thank you. It's been a privilege. I really don't want this to end. So <laughs> I am going to talk really slowly. <laughs> so, so this episode lasts really long. I... I just, again, for anyone who's been listening, please pick up Bianca's book, Grit Don't Quit. You can find that link at Candice.com. So as we, as we wrap up this, this final episode, what encouragement do you have for our listeners? Where are you taking us today? One of the things as we kind of look back at the last 12 weeks, this is our 13th week together, is if this is my swan song, if you will, to those that have been on this journey with us, I want us to look at our trials, trauma, and tribulation as gifts. Mm. I know this sounds really demented, but I say this from experience. So a couple episodes ago, I had mentioned my mom was diagnosed with cancer and the doctors told us to prepare for her funeral, gave her a 30% chance of living. And I vividly remember it was New Year's Eve my mom had just had brain surgery. They opened up her cranium and insured, inserted a, an Amara reservoir that they filled with chemotherapy that would drip through her body every moment of the day. I saw my mom literally dying because of the medication mm. that was hoping that would bring her life. And as we stepped over the threshold from one year to the next, I just remember feeling really angry with God. Yeah. This morning, I had a chance to talk to my mom. And I can look back at that season. And I would like to say, because where we left that story off is that I kind of had like this, this was really my come to Jesus faith story yeah. where I said, you know what, God, I know that you're able, I know that you could heal her, but even if you don't, I'm choosing yeah. you. And um, through man, medicine and miracle, my mom is still alive today. I'm very grateful. Praise and I would like Lord. to say that my faith would still be intact, even if he did take her but I am grateful. And I look back at that season, Candace. Um, I, I had just ended a dysfunctional relationship with a man I affectionately referred to as Satan. We uh, dated for three years and praise God for unanswered prayers. Cause I'm so happy I didn't marry him. Yeah. But it was, my mom was dying with cancer. This relationship with this guy I thought I was going to marry was ended. My grandmother, my Puerto Rican grandmother, my only connection to the Island mm -hmm. passed away during the season. Mm -hmm. So it was just like really confusing. Uh -huh. but I look back retrospectively. And the person that I am today and what I learned in that season, 
I can say what a gift to have been able to suffer for the name of Jesus because the person that I am today would not be who I am had I not had those challenges. And so I also want to not have this be like one swan song after school special because uh-huh. all of us are dealing uh-huh. with challenges. Of course. So as you look back over the scope of your um, 25 years here on life, because you were looking like a snack <laughs> with that high ponytail, you look like <laughs> okay. DJ Tanner, but Thank full you. house style. Okay. Thank you. We're flashing back. I really we, love that. You are looking so snatched. Shout out to Laura for my hair today. Yes. High pony yeah. giving me life. Yeah. Circa 1995. It Bring it back. Bring it <laughs> back. You. Watch it on YouTube. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but over, over the course of your life, a couple dec- decades in, what is the challenge in your life that you feel like, wow, I actually think that that, that trial was a gift. Yeah. There have been some recent challenges in my life that I have not really publicly discussed yet. Mm. And if you read the news or <laughs> certain types of weekly magazines or even Instagram, you'll have seen my face pop up in multiple articles mm-hmm. from last year and this year. And a lot of them were really negative. And I've never taken those types of punches before I've, ta- I've taken punches before in my industry, but it was at a level I hadn't experienced yet. And it was, it's been very challenging. It's still an ongoing challenge. And I think that a lot of people, because I believe strongly in what I believe and I lead with my faith and I'm not afraid or shy or ashamed of it, but I think that Most people that don't know me well and personally think that my skin is a lot thicker than it is. Mm -hmm. And it's not. It's it's not. But it's gotten thicker over the years, but I'm still developing that as well. So when I had a lot of these these bullets kind of hit me in the last year or so, they've been a really big challenge. To me personally, to my heart, to my character, to my relationships, to my jobs, like all kinds of things. And I remember being so upset over it because it's like, how do you recover? I mean, I'll just say it like cancel culture is very real. And I was, they were trying to cancel me. Mm -hmm. And I remember like my brother called me and he was like, Candace, ha ha, welcome to the James Wan Club. <laughs> and I was like, what, what? The James Wan Club? And he was like, you joined it. You finally really joined it. And I was like, what are you talking about? And why are you so happy? They're saying bad things about me in the news. Why are you happy? And so obviously I looked up James one and I recognized the verse immediately. I just didn't know what, (laughs) like where it was in the Bible, but, but in James one, it says, consider it pure joy. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know Mm. that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. Mm. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. I love that it also goes on. I'm going to continue. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. And that person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. I'm going to skip to verse 12. But blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. (gasps) <gasps> for that person who leaves nasty comments on your Instagram about your voice, you could say, bump you. I'm reading scripture because I yes. loved hearing you read the word of God. Amen. Thank you. Thank Amen. you, Bianca. Amen. Thank you. So that, that has been, um, that, that James One Club has been really important for me because I faced some trials that I haven't faced before. And I know they're still going to come. They're yeah. still there. They're yeah. waiting for me. Yeah. And I could have bailed. 
I could have just said, you know what, I'm totally done with this, or I don't want to be a public figure anymore. Because truly, I just want to live my life with conviction. But, but I'm just trying to live my life. <laughs> I'm not necessarily trying to put my life on anyone else. Yeah. But I am a public person. So when you, when you live with conviction, but in anyone's life, you don't, you don't have to necessarily be, com- be public to live with conviction. But when you do in a public place, then you have to be ready for some of those fiery darts to be thrown at you in a bigger public platform. Yeah. Like they're in front of everyone. Yeah. So there's just a, there's a difference there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I taught through the book of James at the father's house and James one, the title of that message, I'll never forget. Um, it's on YouTube, actually. It's called getting over what you're under. Ooh. And I gave this visual of like this very heavy rock. And what happens is that when we're under assault attack or canceling, mm-hmm. it feels like this huge burden that is like above our head and it's exhausting. Mm-hmm. But James teaches us how to get over the very thing that we're under. You live that out. You model that so beautifully. Uh, I want to go back to, I think it was episode four or five when I was sharing about uh, going into our very first outreach in Mm -hmm. prison. Yes. Um, Actually, this wasn't the first one. This was the third one, but this was the opportunity where we had to, we we had, we're given the opportunity to go to a men's prison and a women's prison and do a conference for both. It was Mm -hmm. very exciting. That's when I fell off the moving truck and sprained my ankle, thought I was dying, you know, and my husband was just like, you gotta go, you gotta do this. I bedazzled my booty, the whole thing, right? And for the listeners who didn't hear that episode, go back and check it out. But this is the end of that story. Okay. We're ending the season with why our decisions matter. Hmm. So at that conference, I got out of my wheelchair and I preached with my booty on. And um, towards the end of that, we had live worship. Oh, that was another component that was super fun. I brought in musicians from Lubbock, Texas to come in and lead the inmates in worship. It was a rock and party. We had a, we had a concert. That it, it was so fun. fabulous. And uh, towards the end of my teaching, the band is up on the little makeshift stage. And this six one inmate with small braids comes up towards me towards the end of my preach. And mm-hmm. she, she whispers, can I, can I have the microphone? Hey, uh-huh. Candace, what I wanted <laughs> to say was, no, sit down, <laughs> who are you? But when a six one inmate wearing a prison jumper asks you for the microphone, the only thing you say is yes. So I was like, sure. And I had her the microphone and she said, I, I want to lead, I want to lead us in worship. I said, okay, right on. Well, she went on to proceed and sing a song that a couple people knew. And then she busted out into this freestyle rap Uh and the hook of the rap. It was a bop because I mean, the prison was popping. All right. Okay. Everyone started jumping on the chorus where she said, it's just me and Jesus. Pick it, pick it. It's just me and Jesus. As we were ending with this understanding that all the world could fade away. Mm -hmm. And we could be incarcerated physically Mm -hmm. or incarcerated mentally, incarcerated spiritually, incarcerated financially. And the whole hook was about all we need in this world is Jesus. Corey Tim Boom says, you never know that Christ is all you need until Christ is all you have. Mm -hmm. Now, Mia, the inmate that I befriended that day, didn't know Corey Tim Boom or that quote, but her hook the lyric indicated to us that at the end of the day, it is just me and Jesus. He's all that yeah. I need. Yeah. <laughs> we, we ended up praising the Lord. and It was so beautiful. Here's the hard part about prison ministry is that you serve the incarcerated and you will most like, like, likely never see them again. Right. Fast forward three years later, I'm preaching at a conference in Dallas, Texas. There's 5,000 women in this auditorium. They had so many people volunteering. And I know that the volunteers were a lot because they all had this lime green t-shirt that they had to wear to indicate that they're there to volunteer. I'm preaching. I still remember the passage. It was Romans eight, that we are more than conquerors in Christ. Mm -hmm. And I remember giving this message and I walked off stage. And one thing about me is that like, when I preach, I preach with fire, but I also sweat. Okay. Like I am like hot. I need like a sweat rag or something. And I hate it. People are like, oh, it's just like a glow. They said not a glow, honey. (laughs) A glow was like an hour ago. Right. So I'm like hot and sweaty and I'm walking off and I'm about to walk into the bathroom and I hear somebody down a long corridor shout, Bianca. Pastor Bianca, well, I wave and I'm about to go into the bathroom and she says my name again, Bianca. The security guard in the back walked over and he's just like, are you okay? Do you need help? I said, no, that's fine. He's like, do you know that lady? I was like, no, I don't think so. And all of a sudden I hear, it's just me and Jesus. 
<gasps> it's just me and Jesus. Get out. And I stop. And the security guard's like, do you know that girl? Because listen, listen, listen. I was so taken back because I flashed back to three years ago, LCDC, Lubbock Detention Correctional Facility. And I knew it. I wow. said, Mia, the security guard let you her remember come past. her name? Her name, baby. Her name. Wow. And Mia is not her name. I changed her name to protect our identity. Yes, sure. But we ran into each other's arms and Candace, I wept. Wow. I didn't weep because I was so excited to see her, though I was. I didn't weep because she was released and out of prison, mm -hmm. though I was. I wept because I saw the fruit of perseverance. Mm. I believe that God would have reached Mia through somebody. But I would have lost out on the privilege and honor of serving the incarcerated because of pain. And mm -hmm. it was real pain. And I get it. A lot of us are choosing not to fight because we are in pain. I get that. But I made a decision that I will push past the pain and persevere because I'm a person who declares that she's resilient. I'm independent of my feelings mm -hmm. or sadness. And I will continue to push forward because I'm a gritty gangster. And it takes a lot for me to go down because the enemy will come swinging for me. And he yeah. will knock me down, yeah. but he will not knock me out. No. Because I'm more than a conqueror and I want someone out there to hear. I pray and I declare that you will see the fruit of your sacrifices. Your sacrifices matter. You've come too far to quit now. You're too close to quit. Move forward because yes. your decision will lead other people into freedom. Amen. Amen. I needed that word too. <laughs> I need that every day. We all do. I need a little rah-rah team. <laughs> I, but I, I speak it in my mind. I do declare it over myself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. What a redemptive story too. I'm so glad I didn't even know there was another part to that story when you shared it. Okay. To be honest with you, that's like my hook. Okay. I like, <laughs> okay. I get people in and then okay. I tell them like, it gets better. <laughs> that's so cool. I love it. I love it. You know, this, it, I, I immediately thought of my sister, Melissa. Now she's not spent any time in prison, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but I, of the four of us kids growing up, she was always the most rebellious one, you know, <laughs> just with the friends that she had and all that kind of stuff. I'm not, I'm not going to out her here on the show of like her Does teenage years. Does she listen years. to the podcast? I don't know, actually. I okay. hope she does. I hope she does. <laughs> but she was kind of like the wild one, like the wild child of us four kids. And uh, I wish I could share details, but just she was the wild one. And it was it's pretty amazing because she's 18 months older than me. And God got a hold of her heart. She was one of the last in our family that came to the Lord. Like she didn't want really anything to do with the Lord. Got married um, to a man that wasn't a believer and they were just doing their thing and also had a really trying time as well. And, the, and God got a hold of her heart so much. And I look at my sister, Melissa, now, and she is the most conservative of all <laughs> four of us kids. She homeschools all five of her kids. She loves the Lord so much. Her husband is now a believer. Her children are believers that love the Lord. And it's been this incredibly redemptive story for her and her life. And she, but she didn't quit. You know, yeah. she didn't quit, but she moved through. I, I mean, I can remember her struggles and she just kept, kept moving through it. And then God, God just grabbed a hold of her heart. And it was awesome. I think it's funny. I think we're going to get to heaven and we're going to look <laughs> around and be like, oh, you made it in? Girl, you made it in. There's going to be a lot of those surprises. Totally. There will be. <laughs> totally. That's called so, grace. It's grace. It's totally grace. <laughs> You've heard me talk about my new network, Great American Family Channel. It is the place to find your new favorite holiday movies all year around. If you're like me and you love to snuggle up on the couch with a blanket and a warm drink to watch the best new original Christmas movies of the season, then you're going to want to watch Great American Family Channel. How do you find Great American Family Channel? Well, you can text the word CHRISTMAS to 877-999-1225 for more details. Great American Family Channel is the fastest growing channel on television where we value family, faith, 
and country. You are not going to want to miss everything we're making for you on Great American Family and our streaming platform, Great American Pure Flix. Text the word Christmas to 877-999-1225 to find out how to watch. That's Christmas to 877-999-1225. So we've been talking about, I'm so curious, I've been waiting to ask this question because this whole entire season, we've been talking about don't quit, don't quit. Mm. But Bianca, is there ever a time we should quit? Girl, this is such (laughs) a good question. And I love that we're ending here. Okay. Because the truth of the matter is, is that there will be moments in life where we do quit. We quit a job or we maybe we quit a community because we move and maybe mm-hmm. quit isn't the operative word, but when a season comes to an end. Okay. So I was very intentional writing this book. Uh, I actually mentioned this twice in there's a, <laughs> a disclaimer after section one in the book. And I pulled a line from Kenny Rogers. You got to know when to hold them mm-hmm. and you got to know when to fold them. So I'm writing this book about not quitting, but I also don't want people to be foolish. So the caveat is we quit when something's dangerous. If there is mm-hmm. physical abuse, if there is psychological abuse, you know, we quit in a job or we quit in a relationship because mm-hmm. that's wisdom. If there is infidelity, if there's an adult, if mm-hmm. adultery, there's biblical grounds for sure. quitting. Yes. Um, and uh, another just maybe even just a season, maybe the season has ended. So like, let's go in with eyes wide open. Mm-hmm. We started episode one talking about just how easy it is to throw in the towel. And I wanted to kind of buttress that and flip the coin and say, there are legitimate times that we should quit. Mm. Work with a counselor, wi- mm-hmm. work with a mentor, a trusted person in your life to help walk through, is, is it the time for me to bow out? But then this is my favorite part. I was writing the book and I spoke to my editor and I'm like, I mean, I, we're writing a book on not quitting, but I do think that there are appropriate times to quit. And she's like, don't write it in the book, have an appendix. So I'm very excited that in this book, this is my first appendix. And there's a couple, um, I actually have a whole section on gratitude. I wrote an entire piece on gratitude. So I love how you end every show because gratitude really rewires our brain. It does. And um, so there's that. And then there's also 15 reminders from Paul when we just feel like, dang, I want to quit and throw in the towel. 15 verses that from Paul just recalibrate our heart. And the last section is, Five questions to ask when you want to quit. Ooh. So what this does is that it helps buttress mm-hmm. what and when and how we should quit. Okay. Because we should. There are, you can hear me there say, after times. all this season of saying, don't quit, there are times to quit, but we need to be wise when doing it. So I'm going to give a couple questions. There's five in the book. Okay. I don't know if we have time to get through all five. Maybe this is the incentive. Like we'll give a little hint and <laughs> yeah, save the last to get one. The book. <laughs> <laughs> but the first question everyone should ask, and like, let's, let's workshop this. Let's like dialogue. Okay. The first question that you should ask when you feel like you're having that angst, you're having a uh, moment mm-hmm. of unsettled emotions. You feel like I'm so exhausted. I want to quit is, is it me? Is it me? Because when we want to quit, we are so quick to point out it's them. It's my boss. It's my job. It's my budget. It's my apartment. It's my roommate. When the truth is hold up, whoop, time out. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's you. Maybe you're the one that is discontent because nothing is going to quiet your soul. Mm. Maybe the issue is actually you. Maybe you're upset with your boss because they're upset with you and trying to course correct you because you're always late, but you're showing up with Starbucks in your hand. That's not abuse. That's called adulthood. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So this question, is it me, has to be asked. Thoughts, feelings? Yeah. Objections? No, it's great. That's where you, yeah, you have to take a look at yourself. Yeah. And you have to be able to accept some constructive criticism as well. Yes. That's difficult for a lot of people. So first question, is it me? Is it me? Is it me? Second question that you should ask when you are thinking about leaving, transitioning, or ending a job mm-hmm. or a friendship or a, a church, something like that, is do I have the solution? Like so, a plan B? No. Okay. It, could I be the answer to this problem? Maybe the thing that frustrates you in your marriage, the thing that frustrates you about your relationship with your child, the thing that <sighs> frustrates you about your job yeah. is actually something that God is giving you a solution for. Are you willing to do the work? to be the solution. Mm. So instead of throwing in the towel, we can say, you know, if I'm having issues with a friend and I just want to be like, bump her, waste of my time. I don't want to put any more effort into this. Maybe the issue is me. Maybe I've grown a callous heart. Maybe I'm not sensitive. So (laughs) when, when Val and I were having a really tough time, 
and Lev sat us down to preach a Your sermon. Your son. My son. I think the, the s- listeners need to know. I've, sh- I, I've shared this, but my, my son sat us down and basically preached a sermon on marriage to us. <laughs> and- I love Lev. He's my favorite of your kids. (laughs) (laughs) And at the end of it, this is reminding me of exactly what you said. He looked me in the eye and he goes, mom, have you done everything you can? Have you exhausted all possibilities of what you can do for the effort in your marriage? (gasps) Ooh, that was like, oh, heart, like my stake in my heart and punch in my gut. Wow. So I'm like, and was I this? And he was like, absolutely right. I'm like, no, I could be the solution. There is more that I can do and work on. How, can I ask a personal question? Yeah. How long ago was that? Uh, two years, three years ago, three years ago. And on the other side, do you feel like you've done work and it's changed? Oh the, yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. Wow. I did a lot of work and Val did a lot of work. Wow. So you could have felt justified in walking away and look at you on the other oh, side of that. It's true. And I was ready to justify all of it. Wow. But, look at God. That's a testimony, I kn- girl. I know. Okay. Oh, oh it is. So but question okay, number one yeah. is, is it me? Question number two is, do I have the solution mm-hmm. or am I the answer? Right. Okay. Okay. Um, do we want to do one more? <laughs> yes. I think we should. I love this. I, okay, I love good. talking You and I both <laughs> love like self-knowledge and how I do we know. grow? I know. I know. I know. I okay. It. Question number three is, is this good for my future? Hmm. So before you quit your job where you have benefits and health insurance and dental yeah. and vision, and maybe not the pay that you want, but the pay that's allowing you to live before you jump ship, baby, make sure there's a lifeboat. Is this a good decision for your future? Right. So you're thinking again, we're going to use all these different contexts, but in marriage, instead of like throwing up the deuces and signing divorce mm-hmm. paper, you think about the future. Is this the best thing for my future? future and the, my children's future. Exactly, if you have kids, exactly. Which goes into legacy. And yes, I'm not saying yes. don't ever quit. I'm saying, can we be wise when we do? Right. Can we right, be right. wise when we do? Right. Yeah. Thoughts, okay. insights. Oh, no, that's so good. That, that's exactly what I thought about parenting. And is this good for my future? I thought of my kids because my choices, as we talked about legacy, yep. don't just affect me. Yes. They affect, they can affect generations. 100%. 100%. Ready mm-hmm. for the next question? Yes. <laughs> Does my community agree? Ooh. Yep. Ooh, talk about that. Okay. So we make decisions in isolation and feel like this is what feels good for me and this is what works for me and this is what serves me. Okay, that could be very we true. we live in a me culture, oh, in a honey, me world. We are Everything so is self-absorbed. about serving ourselves. We are so self absorbed I say we not like, like I'm pretending like me and the mouse in my pocket. I'm talking us as a culture. Even though yeah. I love Jesus, I give my life sacrificially for the church, for other people, for my community, but I'm very self-absorbed. We all are. Mm-hmm. We all are. What yeah. do people say? When you see a picture, the first person you think about and the first person you see is you. Of course. We are all self-absorbed. So I'm self-absorbed. <laughs> I feel like I just had to say, hi, I'm Candace and I'm self-absorbed. <laughs> I'm Bianca and I'm self-absorbed too. We're getting our confessions out right here on the yeah. show. Uh, but I think it's important when, before we make a big decision on whether or not we're leaving a church, leaving a friendship, leaving a marriage, leaving a job is what does your community say? Me mm. personally, I just believe in the power of threes. I think that there should be three people too. that you ask in your community. Don't all ask your single fancy fo- footloose and fancy free friends if you should quit your marriage because they don't understand your life. So you should ask a friend who's in a similar life stage. You should ask a mentor, someone who has a, mm-hmm. a life that they've lived and yeah. it's, they've lived it well. And then a counselor, a mentor, or a pastor, someone who is seasoned to give wise counsel. I always believe that you should ask people three things, or you should, excuse me, you should ask three people what yeah. they think about the situation. And one of those three should not be attached to your decision. Meaning don't go to your boss and say, do you think I should quit my job? they are selfish. They're going to say, no, I want you to stay here. They don't want to find a new employee. So you have to ask somebody that doesn't have a dog in the fight. Right. You have to ask someone that's not connected to it. So ask a peer, you get one peer, ask a mentor, someone who's not connected to the situation and ask a trained professional, a licensed therapist, a coach, a counselor, uh, a pastor, someone that has insight. Side question. Yes. Is there something biblical about threes? We know seven's a number in the Bible, but because you said, I believe like in the power of threes, I believe in that too. So I'm like, is that biblical at all? Or did um, we just make that scripture up? Scripture does say there is wisdom in a multitude of counselors. And okay. if you look at multitude in the original language, it's not speaking in a multitude in the way that we understand it. 
Okay. It's in more of like a duo, a trio or a quad. Okay. So there isn't okay. like a direct connection. Like thus okay. is Just Lord, wondering, three people. When I'm like, that's what I think. If I hear something, I, and it lines up with scripture, but if I hear it three times from people, <gasps> that is confirmation Can't just be to me. Too. Oh my gosh. Another yeah. commonality. We're basically <laughs> twins. That's what I'm saying. Barb, you already have me. a twin. Can I be the, the triplet. Of the triplet? You'll be in the middle. You'll be the Oreo. Dark on the outside, lighter <laughs> okay. on the inside, delicious and sweet. Okay. okay. I feel good. Are you ready for the last question? Yes. So let's go through all of them for okay. our note takers that are driving and they can't take notes or on the treadmill. Okay. One, is it me? Two, do I have the solution or slash am mm -hmm. I the answer? Three, is this good for my future? Four, does my community agree? And the last one, I'm giving all the goods right now. Yeah, you are. Am I released? Okay, mm. okay. I looked at you because I grew up in a, in a church culture and environment where I never heard that. Like, I didn't get it. What do you mean released? So I worked for an organization and I just was like, I am, I am overworked. I'm underpaid. I'm exhausted. No one here in the office has kids. I have two young kids. No one here has a master's. I have a master's degree. I am like, I'm, I'm like working the midnight hours. It was exhausted. And the very selfish, sad, broken part of me was like, I'm ready to be done. And I was talking and processing with a co coworker, which side note, don't do. <laughs> That's messy. Mm. That's so messy. Uh, but I was talking to her about it and she looked at me and she just asked me a pointed question. She's like, are you released? I was like, what does that mean? And I felt like, okay, maybe that's what like charismatic people say. Like, I don't know what uh -huh. that means. And she said, no, when Jacob wrestled with God, he said, I will not stop wrestling with you until you bless me. Are you willing to walk away from the wrestle because you're tired? Because Jacob wrestled all night with God. Mm. And I, wow. it took me a second to realize where she was going. She's like, do you feel like the hand of God has come up off of you so that you can move on? Or do you feel like you have to be here? I said, I feel like I have to be here. I feel like it's so messed up. I feel like it's dysfunctional. Like what's wrong with me? Is this Pavlovian, like, uh, you know, uh, Stockholm so syndrome? And do I want to be abused? Like what's going on? And uh -huh. I made this whole thing about me. But the truth of the matter was, it wasn't my boss. It wasn't my job. It wasn't what I was doing. It was my long work hours. It's what God asked me to do. Yeah. And I just was kicking and screaming. But if you, but if you feel released, then you that might go. be a time and to that's quit. The fifth you can question. walk away. That's, that's the good I put that at the very end. I put that at the very end because I do believe you have to do the work. Is it you? Yeah. What does your community yeah. say? Yeah. You know, do you have the solution? But the last one is really a spiritual thing. Now for people who are not of faith, but happen to listen to the podcast, this doesn't really pertain to them. But us as believers of Jesus, we will seek the Lord. And I honestly believe you will feel a release. You can't explain it. It's not like a hand on you, but there's mm -hmm. a release saying, I'm done. I, I, I'm released. I have fulfilled what God has called me to do. Period, punto, full stop, the end. <laughs> That's the point I want people to get to. Yeah. And so as we wrap up the season, this is what we want for people. Yeah. Ask these hard questions. It's okay to quit, but quit well. Last thing, this is a funsy and a freezy. <laughs> Don't be messy. You know, don't burn bridges. Don't burn bridges. I agree. You can leave, when you leave a church, a marriage, a friendship, a job, you can leave a zero or you can leave a hero. Mm, but that's on that's you. That's so good. That's on you. That's so really good. Let's quit well. We will quit well. For our final, final listener question, we are going to hear from Lacey. She asks, what advice? Oh, this is a fun question. Sorry. <laughs> what advice do you have for newlyweds? My husband and I are five months into our marriage. We seek all biblical and godly wisdom that anyone can offer. Well, Lacey, congratulations on your marriage. That's so exciting. So cute. I'm, I'm, yes. My son is engaged in getting married and I'm very excited. So he doesn't them. know this, but I'm the flower girl. Surprise, You're right. <laughs> surprise, surprise, Lev. <laughs> um, well, what advice do you have? Bianca, how many years have you been married? Next month, it'll be 13. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're a little closer to the newlywed stage, although we're pretty <laughs> both far apart, but... What advice would you have as newlyweds? I say this as a, a, a pastor, Bible teacher, like uh, been serving the Lord for a really long time. I'm not going to give you a Bible verse. I'm going to give you some practical handles. Okay. Get a great therapist. <laughs> I'm not kidding. No, I, I'm because laughing because it's, it's kind true. of true. It's kind of Sometimes true. Sometimes you just need a third party moderator because you yeah. don't know how to communicate yet. And you just need, it's like training wheels. So the first two years of our marriage were incredibly hard. And I grew up in a culture where like, you only went to therapy if you were crazy. And so when I told right. my family I was going to therapy, they were like, yeah. what's wrong, Bianca? Why are you going to the therapist? They thought I was yeah. something wrong with me. And I'm like, 
Well, no, it's it's like processing and, and learning, talking through emotions and explaining yeah. and articulating what I need. Da, 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 da. So that's my advice. Honestly, okay. love the Lord, deny yourself and get a good therapist. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I'm going to say in the newlywed stage, have fun, enjoy each other, have so much fun. We all know that life gets hard. I always say it's like a roller coaster. There are going to be so many ups and downs. And while you're in the honeymoon stage and the newlywed stage, you already know you're going to come up against finances and the talks about children and life and work and jobs. So while you're in this season, I'm like, just enjoy each other. Like look into each other's eyes, hug and kiss and just <laughs> like make out. Okay. That's you heard it here on the too. Candace Cameron Bure podcast. Slip <laughs> a little tongue action in there. <laughs> but really communication, as you said, is going to take you the furthest. Lots of love, denying yourself, putting yeah. your spouse up on a pedestal in the way that, you know, you just want to treat them well and hope and that they would do the same for you and treat you well. So, okay. Hope, hope that answers your question. This season has been so much fun. Bianca, thank you so much for everything. I've just loved every minute of our conversation. You are a joy and a word wizard and <laughs> you are just, you're fire. And I, I love it. You are, um, I wish I could like, figure out the words that I want to say. I wish I had access to my vocabulary the way that you do. <laughs> I've truly enjoyed every minute of your teaching and your knowledge. And I'm very blessed to have you on this season. So thank you. You have become someone that I have admired from far, but respect up close. Mm. Thank you for paving waves, uh, paving ways that the next generation will be able to walk on. Thank you for not cowering when the world is shouting, sit down. Thank you for still using your voice when the world tells you to shut up. And thank you for mm. this podcast because it takes a lot out of you. And what you do is you create a table for so many people to sit at. So what a privilege and honor it is to be on your show. Thank you for having me. It, I, I can't wait to see what God <laughs> does with these episodes. Me too. Well, this season of the podcast has been all about when the going gets tough. And we have that free download for you called What to Do in the Waiting that you can get at Candice.com. And you will also find a link to Bianca's book and you have to pick it up called Grit Don't Quit. We are so happy, so thrilled that you've been able to join us for these conversations. Until next time, be grateful all day, every day. It's wrapped! It's wrapped! It's wrapped! having these conversations. Would you give me a thumbs up and a comment and subscribe? Candy Rock Entertainment, all rights reserved. <laughs>